been going hard since I was born. No, I can't stop now. I cross you over, run you over. No, I can't stop now. Working hard for these dreams. No, I can't stop now. Going through your whole team. No, I can't stop now. Came from Tacoma where the rim was barely make it out. USC bound, you can see he's on a different route. My brother's keeper, if you creep me, you gon' say the truth. Clean cut, boys, take the picture, see the proof. I put the work in, I make the crowd go wild. Time make the touchdown, that's all you hear all night. The only L I ever took is Stephen Lee. Julie and Simon, get your money, they can't be you. Been going hard since I was born, no, I can't stop now. I cross you over, run you over, no, I can't stop now. Working hard for the dream, no, I can't stop now. Going through your whole team, no, I can't stop now. So I'm talking about today. Today is a new day. You were asleep. That's all right. We got something important we got going on. Now you up. Exactly. So I woke you up just in time. It's all good. Uh, I probably should have told you a little earlier because <laughs> you're not. Your hair, bro. It's not. Your hair. You said what? Yeah, it's not looking good, bro. You might want to go in the mirror and check that out. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing, though. We're going to beat the buffs every year from here on out. Every time. We suck. You know, you can just play with a bunch of pretty boys. Man. We like the lights. I mean, we are in LA, so we gotta, we gotta like some. We gotta. I now you're crazy. Now you're talking a little bit crazy right now. You ain't what? How? Oh my god! They soft in Colorado. How about that? Since you y'all can't tackle, right? That was the problem, right? Soft. Y'all air the ball out. So, so that's the offense. Had, air raid. You better air ball. We had no so our plan worked. <laughs> it worked. It worked in our favor then. What are you doing, bro? He washing his hair. Huh? I said you fixing your hair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, I'm glad you're doing that because it wasn't looking right, bro. Shut up, bro. <laughs> My COVID, like you struck struck by lightning kind of. Because COVID is lightning these days. Even at my weakest point, I still get enough energy to whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Boy! <laughs> Bro, what up? Oh, you got my mic falling all out. You got my... <laughs> <laughs> you crazy? What? Nah, bro. I don't know about that. I'm telling you, it just looked like COVID just struck you. COVID. <laughs> you be having a little backlash. Ow. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> messing around, man. People messing around with that COVID. I'm telling you, it's a bad. It's a. Playing around. You hey, what? Hey, what? Like that? Uh, what? Um, Stephen A. Smith said, "That's a bad man. That COVID. That's a bad man." Man, I'm good. Hmm. Gonna have you doing the workouts, and then you gonna start. You gonna start coughing. Shoot. Because <laughs> right, you know California. Hey. California you got your bumps. You think it's going to magically go away when you go to California? Nah, I ain't say all that. I'm just hopefully it'll calm down a little bit. That's all right, bro. I'm just messing with you, man. Don't don't take it to the heart. Don't take it. It's all good. It's all love. Who's the best Simon, brother? So Deontay's going to say you.
And then obviously, I mean, he's going to say him, and then you're going to say you are. I'm going to say I am, so who we going to ask? Those two people over there. Nah, they be they be picking favorites. They be hey. picking favorites. Yeah, they be. I don't know. They're a little scandalous with their with their picking options. That's, that's kind of shady. Who the best at what though? At what? We got to be specific. Well, I'm obviously I'm the, best, I'm the best at basketball, so you just throw that out the way. I mean, to be honest, I'm not gonna say nobody's better than me, but. Shoot, he had he had those hoop skills, and he was real nice at a young age. And shoot, he can be a better hooper than me. Middle hair, baby. He can be a better hooper than me. He can be a better hooper than me. Yeah, that, that's fine, I'll admit it. But I'll the best, Basketball player, yeah, you know that. <laughs> no, I'm going there. I'm not. Last time you played me one on one, it didn't go. Well. I gave you the ball, if anything. I, I Whether I seen it back, that was that's I didn't see it. That was that was so rare. <laughs> that's the problem these days. Big man, big man think they're guards. They're not. You ain't Joel and you ain't Anthony Davis. That's the, probably the only one I say is a guard. All right, next time I see you, you're going to play one on one. I'm going to beat you shooting. <laughs> All jumpers, no way. <laughs> you sound you sound very confident in that, bud. Yeah, I did that. What, bro? I was in the sixth grade. That was okay. like how many years ago? I was in eighth. That was like how many years ago, bro? Okay, but what was the score? I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I literally you don't remember, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Because <laughs> I let you shoot. I let you shoot wide open shot. You've been running, you've been ducking ever since. <laughs> I've been ducking ever since. Wow. So he said he's the best basketball player? That's what he claims. You ain't saying nothing That's over there? That's what he claims. He's oh, not even in the conversation. We we can both agree he's not in the conversation. You know who, yeah. Yeah, we can agree that he's. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's good for a shutdown defender, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just out there smoking legs. legs. <laughs> he was just out there smoking legs, thinking he's Kyrie, <laughs> doing all this, all this, all these. He ain't playing defense. Yeah. Who plays defense at the park? <laughs> that was his glory days, right? You two ever win a basketball accolade? Nope. What do you mean? What are you talking about, bro? No. First team. First team. First oh, team. Wow. Ever win the individual awards? I didn't need to. Nobody okay. care about no, no okay. Pierce County League. Pierce County <laughs> <laughs> Right. So ask him how many. Where's his uh, football accolades? His personal football accolades. Where's those? Right. No, it not existed. Right. <laughs> Where that? Oh, okay. I was the offensive player of the year. When? In the Narrows League, not the Pierce County League. I've been doing that since my freshman year. So was I. And after that, first team DB and wide receiver. And then the year after that, first team DB and wide receiver again. And no, plus defensive MVP of the league. Two years in a row. Oh, I hate to say this to you, but uh, only one of us. All that, two all, years in a row. Only one bro. of us played varsity for four years. Whoops. Two of us. You going to play for four years? That don't count. All right. That doesn't count, bro. Right. You know damn well that don't count, bro. I hate to go there, but Come. only one of us for four years. You know that don't count. Varsity Come on, bro. He, he said I played four years because You're not. Uh, I'm not finna play sports Only this year. one of us. I didn't play four years. Man, only one of us is four year varsity level. Okay, that's fine, but even the only one four years, who I mean, like the the other two is where I'm just saying, bro. What the the other two is we got one in Colorado and one at USC. Yeah. I mean, but I'm just saying, bro, where's the other one? Yeah, so you could be the only one that won four years, but yeah. it seems like the people who have less than four are doing a little bit better. 
At post post high school, I'm just saying. Played one full year high school football. They still got to. You played I one full year high school football. I right, broke your arm a couple times. Yeah. Wow, you missed it. One full game. year. Look at him. Bow. <laughs> Look where he at. Missed a four year uh, varsity letter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ask my big brother to buy me nothing. Cause you don't got one. I'm just saying, <laughs> you don't got one. If you had one, you would ask him. <laughs> True oh facts. Come on. Man. I ain't got no big brother. I don't got no big brother trying to take care of me. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm gonna be making a smoothie. This is usually what I do, you know, after my workouts. This is a little fruit, 100% fruit. 100% juice, apple juice that is. You want to just pour your little fruit, however much you want to your liking. I don't really got to measure anymore. So I just want, you know, you just want to pour your apple juice right up over it. You always want to get a little, a little bit more juice than fruit because um, we don't want no ice cream. We're not making ice cream. That's not what we're making. You got to put your little vitamin C. Two or three is good enough. Just a couple. Actually, it just looks good already. Vitamin C, immune, immune system health. That's what we need. That's what, that's what we want. Put it in this Nutribullet. Here we go. Every time, it's, it's like perfect. It's perfect. Perfection right there. Tasty and it's good for you. We like two in one. The protein is not really good. So, you know, I don't like to put it in a drink, but I'll, I'll take the bar because it's easier, you know? You can just eat it real quick and then get it out the way. So this, this bar, you know, we get this from, uh, where you get it from, Costco? It's a pretty good, you know, I like it. It got, it got a lot of protein in it, you know, 21 grams. That's pretty good, you know? and it. It's not the best, but it don't it don't taste bad, you know. So it's all right. It's all right. My mom likes to buy them, so I'm gonna eat them. This flow real nice. And you want that juice, like you know, something you can just mm. it goes right down. You know, you don't want nothing that you're gonna be stuck on. It's not what we want. We ain't making horseradish. It can be a little meal replacement, but usually I just like to do it in the mornings or whatever. I try to get three meals a day, you know, because it's important. A lot of people like to think fasting and not eating meals is the way to, you know, lose weight or the way to be healthier. Nah, you need three meals a day, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, something. You gotta get something in your system for all three of those meals, and I think that's the most important thing. Um, as far as like my calorie intake, I kind of leave that all up to my mom as far as like dinner and everything and like, but the lunch and the, the breakfast part is on me. So, you know, I don't, you, you, obviously you don't want to eat too much, but you want to get something good in your system and that's going to carry you throughout the day. That don't matter. It's, <laughs> you know, as long as I drink it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Took the straw when the camera turned off. Look at it. You know, I, it's all good. I like to drink it with a straw. It don't, it don't matter. I could drink it, you know, sip, sip it, but I like the, the straw. Um, so the boys have always been really competitive, as I'm sure you probably figured that out by now. Um, but there's 22 months between Julian and Jaden, and then five years between Deontay and, and Julian. And um, Jaden was always really big, so they would always just give Julian the hardest time. And of course, you know, they're all competitive, everybody wants to win. Pretty soon, he's just like, forget it, they ain't gonna, you know, take it easy on me because I'm the baby or nothing. So they would, he would just have to figure it out. Growing up, man, my parents always used to kill me because I never gave them no breaks. Especially with Julian, I used to really give it to him. Like, nobody got any breaks. and. I guess it's just all paying off now. As you can see, there's a lot of competition. 
that's been you know kind of broiling up for years. As they got older, they got worse. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, man, just the competition they have between the three of them is just be like, oh my gosh, will you guys be quiet? I have to sleep with earplugs at night. And everything we do, like video games, uh, obviously sports, and just, I mean, that's just who we are, you know, playing board games or whatever it is. We're just very competitive people. You know, video day, yelling all over each room, yelling, yeah, yeah. playing video games, yelling at each other from the room, all across the house. Sometimes to the point where our parents are just like, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, you guys need to stop, like, just stop doing all that. But. We ain't ever gonna listen. I mean, at the end of the day, we just, I, it's always gonna be that way. You know, yeah, like I told you earlier about the, you know, yeah. touching up here on the wall. Yeah. Who can jump the highest? Who can jump the highest? Who can eat the most? Who can dance the best? I mean, just nothing's off limits, you know? Mm -hmm. so, and, and especially with uh, Julian and Jaden, they shared a room pretty much growing up. And even when we moved into a bigger house and they could split, they decided to stay together for a little while. So it was. I don't know why, because now we're fighting over who's watching TV or who's gonna get to play a video game first or the longest. Or I'm just, just even with friends, you know, Jay would have his friends and Julian would be like, well, why can't I come? You know, I'm like, well, he has to have his own. You know, but he was like, no, no, whatever you're doing, I need to be doing it too. So. <laughs> I always say at the end of the day, without you know them two, you know, in my life, and just I, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Deontay, nonstop. Mm -hmm. Jaden, <laughs> relax. Yeah. Yeah. Julian, in between. <laughs> I mean, even to this day, they will always, you know, try to, you know, kind of big bro me and try to, you know, oh, I'm still your big brother no matter what, no matter how big you get, you know, no matter what happens, um, I'll always be your big brother. That's kind of what their mentality is, you know, which I respect, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm always going to be like, nah, forget that. Like, <laughs> you ain't finna just, you know, big bro me like that. So, um, but yeah, I would say most definitely they kind of, kind of just set the "oh, I'm your big brother" kind of tone, which you know I had to, I had to accept and respect, you know. And a lot of times I didn't like it, um, especially growing up. Like I would always get mad, you know, because you know they would kind of be like, "No, you can't do this," or "No, you know." I will always be mad, but you know I had to accept it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Julian, he was just an animal. <laughs> Just, just an animal. He just walked around. He was a little big man on campus. <laughs> he started getting into organized sports. Like the kids his age could not handle him. I was like, Julian, why, why it looked like he was out there jogging? He'd be like, oh, I wanted to make him think he could catch up with me. And then I just sped up real fast. But Julian, at, well, that was before he could play tackle. He would, he was mad. He used to get so mad because he wanted to put on play football himself tackle. And he would just be, like go, he'll go into the brother's room, get that gear, and he'll be outside throwing the football up to himself. Just, you know. Waiting for the day. Yeah. All we could do with him was just put him in flag football. <laughs> we all have our different, you know, stories, to be honest. But, I mean, really, I think mine was definitely when I started playing FBU. That's when my, my mind just, like, shot to football. Um, the relationship he had with the coaches, you know, like they, I mean, they were his first offer and for a school to keep in contact and, you know, let you know they want you, you know, year after year, you know, so that made him feel good inside, you know, and with all the other 19 other scholarship offers he had, you know, USC was the one that he felt the love from and he fell in love with, so that pretty much was the deciding factor and if he's happy, I'm happy. And I can remember that day like it was like it was yesterday. Um, it was, we had morning workouts. Uh, we do 5 a.m. workouts uh, January through June for our Lincoln football program. So I remember we had, we had those workouts and it was literally right after those workouts. Uh, my coach, he goes, he's like, um, we, uh, USC wants to talk to you. Like he gave me the coach's number. He's like, oh, you need to call this number, you know, ASAP. You know, I think there's some good news. So I was like, all right, you know, me not knowing, I'm like, okay. So I call him and then uh, we, um, we want to offer you your first scholarship. And just hearing that, it was kind of like, my eyes got real big. And I'm like, oh man, you know, this is, this is crazy. Like things are about to get crazy. 
and he and I remember him telling me that too. He's like, right after he broke the news, he goes, um, yeah, so just remember, you know, we 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 extended it first and we want you to know that we love you and then like, you know, we really want you here. And he's like, things are about to get very different from now on. And I think from that moment, that's when I knew. And then so right after I uh, got off the phone, I, I called my parents. It was a wonderful experience, you know, just receiving it um, and just, you know, breaking the news to my mom. It was like, man, like all this hard work, you know, all this driving me to practice and driving me here, driving me there to AU tournaments, whatever, you know, it's finally, it's gonna pay off. No, man. Yeah, they're not little. No. It's, and they haven't been little for a very long time. Like, you know, usually when you have a baby, okay, when we had Deontay, oh, it's a boy, okay, that's great. Then the next one, oh, that's a boy too. And you're thinking, oh, okay, well, I can, you know, save the clothes. No, Jay and Mike couldn't fit anything that Deontay had. He was like just way too big. And so they've been, you know, big since they were little and they love to eat and nothing's off limits. I think the only thing that they all three didn't like was mustard. And I think probably some of them eat it Mustard now. and tomatoes. But yeah, everything else <laughs> didn't matter. My snacks, stuff that they wouldn't go to the store and buy, they would eat it all. They love chicken. Like when, on their birthdays, I'll usually cook a special meal. And it's always like mom's honey barbecue wings. I have to go to cash and carry and get a 20-pound bag of chicken wings. So you think about all them chicken bones in the trash can. And then they're like, there's like none left. You know, we Costco pizza, we have to have three pizzas. And then that's ridiculous and very low. Dad would always get mad because there's no leftovers for him to take for lunch to work the next day. <laughs> so big grocery bill. Uh, I think it started with my mom being there, uh, graduating in 94. Um, she kind of is the one that, I mean, because we knew growing up that that was where we were going to go. So really, we kind of just Lincoln was. And then especially when my, my, older, my oldest brother. Uh, got there as a freshman and we started going to you know all the games and everything started creating the you know Lincoln environment it's kind of like it, it's it's loyalty like it's, we have a certain loyalty to Lincoln and I mean really since I was you know young and going to all the games uh, it's just that's kind of how it's been like it was always you know Lincoln Lincoln or die Lincoln or nothing I couldn't wait you know just watching it uh it was like, man, I want to be out there so bad. Like, I just want to go to high school. And I want to play in the Lincoln jersey, and I want to, you know, play football and basketball and, you know, do all the things, you know, that my older brother was doing because that's what I was watching and that's what I seen. So, I mean, I was just waiting my time. And then as middle school came on and watching my, my other brother do it as well, I just got really anxious and was like, you know, I need, I can't wait to go, go to Lincoln. So. Really, I mean, that's honestly what pushed the legacy to just continue on with, you know, what my brothers built and, you know, what they were building. Uh, really, that I just, yeah, I just couldn't wait to get in the Lincoln jersey. I feel that it's, well, I'm not sad, but a lot of other people seem to be sad that it's over, that Julian is the last one. They're like, don't you want to have some more kids? Uh, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> Like, no, you have to wait for the grandkids on that one. So it's, you know, not only for ourselves, but they just seem to be, um, you know, a bright spot in the school. Any teachers that I've talked to, people that have run across the kids, you know, when they figure out, oh, you know, you're Julian Jade and they're Deontay's moms. Like, oh my goodness, they're such well-rounded human beings. They're, you know, good people on the field, off the field, on the court, you know, off the court. Um, and just like, um, you know, I had a teacher tell me once, she was like, you know, your kids are, those kind of people that they make everyone feel comfortable it does if they can bring a group of people together that would probably never you know sit at the lunch table together or whatever just because of you know how they are and how open they are that's how kind they are like kind hearts when we moved here to Tacoma not really knowing a lot of people we got involved with church and that helped us get you know to know more people in the community and then we were able to start doing some things in the community and the boys just through sports they've been exposed to you know giving back doing some volunteer works, um, local sports, you know, uh, Metro Parks when they started that, um, AAU, you know, then youth football, they did a lot of community outreach, and then even in like the training programs, and, and of course in high school too, so I think they just got it from all sides, and so, um, and they have got to see the effects of them, you know, helping others, other people in need, and um, being a big part of the community, and giving back to the community, like with Deontay coming back and coaching at Lincoln, um, I think they, it's really important to them. It's been really important to them. We've 
been on the east side pretty much my whole life. Um, it's just where we come from, born and bred here, and want to do everything to uh, give back to this area because it's not really recognized as it should be. A lot of great people, athletes, um, politicians come from here, and we just got to build up, build that up. I think we just, especially for football and basketball, I, I would say definitely we left a legacy of winning because that's just now that's the culture um, with my brothers. You know, my oldest brother won numerous of championships, you know, league. Um, just, I view, yeah, I would just say winning was kind of the type of legacy we left. Yeah. And I was just one side. Then we got, you got two legs, right? We got to do the other side. It's tough. This is the grind part of it all. These stretches, it's top notch right here, man. I just got to show you. I can't talk too much about it. Get his money, man. It's Monday. That's what we're here for. Boom, go, go, go. Coach D. I've probably been training probably since about 2004, ever since I got done playing ball. I ran into Julian probably around 2015, seeing him play, I think he was in the seventh grade, and seeing how he was so focused at that young age, man. He didn't know me, I didn't know him. You know how when you see somebody and you're like, man, this is a baller right here. I said, hey man, I got my, I got my eye on you, man. I said, show me something, and he just nodded his head, yep. <laughs> And he showed me a lot, you know what I mean? He showed me a lot. Just Tacoma, like he's a Tacoma kid, man, like through and through. And he had a lot of opportunities to do other things. And the fact that he stayed home and stayed at Lincoln and did that, I just, it was hats off to him. He had that mindset like, man, I can, I can get where I want to go home. Here, I don't have to go anywhere else. I can get it here. And he showed me that he, he, he can, he done it. We just started from there. I'm talking about we go four days a week. He doesn't miss a day, he doesn't call in. Man, this is one of the hardest workers I, I had the opportunity to, uh, to train. And I was like, man, you got a lot of work. I said, you got a ceiling that you ain't even reach yet, man. And I was just excited. My thing with Get Your Money is, I don't wanna overexert the kids. It's not about conditioning. It's a progressive program. And I tell parents, um, if you wanna get your kids to run a 4-2 tomorrow, like. I'm not the guy that you need, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna false promise you or anything. It's very progressive. We, we literally start from A to Z. And in this program, I like to work a lot on hip mobility and flexibility and core. And today what we did, with all the movements that we, we all went through these past few months, and now implemented with, with lifting. At the same time, uh, we do a lot of deadlifts because it works your whole posterior, posterior part of your body. And I always say, you know, the front is for show, the back is for go. And we try to get him to go, you know what I mean? Like I said, he got a lot of goals uh, that he tells me and I'm trying to help him reach it. One thing I like to use as far as uh, my training is uh, these bands that I have. I call them GYM bands, which you know GYM is get your money. So <laughs> get your money bands. And what they do is we call them uh, the Army Swiss Knife or Resistant Bands because you can do so many different things with them. It's something I came up with, me and my partner. And it's doing pretty well right now. And, uh, you know, you can go to GYM, 
uh, bands.com and, and get you some. Getyourmoneyfitness.com, is, that's my website. You can go and book your, your sessions. Uh, I got different packages for different goals that you're trying to accomplish, whether you're an athlete or just a novice, a fitness novice, you know what I mean? And those bands, it's like a one size fit all. Oh, they fit on my eight year old as well as the six two two twenty guy. So. Uh, uh, don't try this at home. I'm telling you, this is not for TV. It's not. You know my saying. You know it's not for TV, man. This is real money. This is real money. Oh. Uh, when you're tired, you get in that zone, but you ain't tired, ain't tired. there you go. You gotta get in, you gotta find that zone. I feel like CJ McCullough now. <laughs> Spinal, I broke my back. <laughs> <laughs> Spinal. <laughs> Y'all remember that smoothie I was talking about? It's smoothie time. It's smoothie time. Four days out of the week, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. You know, I wake up early, I'm an early bird, early bird, get some work. It might not be that early to people, but still, most people at my age aren't really doing this. They're probably just waking up right now. That's the only way to do it. That's it. <laughs>